Angus Fogg chasing down John McIntyre for the race lead in race two of the Ben TV8 here at the Powerful Tools Raceway at Royal Freedom Park. John McIntyre looking a lot better than he did in race number one, Mark. It just looked like they were struggling with that race car. It did, yeah. He wasn't as comfortable in the car as we've seen in previous rounds of previous championships. But looking back, Andy Booth, that and Holden Commodore, very similar times to the race leaders. Those guys will take a lot out of that because they have been battling to get a consistent speed out of those Holdens. Well, McIntyre's just set the fastest lap for the race at a 1.31.05 under the old lap record, but about three tenths outside of the lap record that Kane Scott set in race number one. He looks a lot better just watching that onboard shot. There's not anywhere near as much movement on the steering wheel, which, you know, it was highlighted, obviously, with those white Alpine Star gloves. Fantastic to watch. Yeah, look, he's made the connection that they've been looking for, and they're another team that would have made a minimal amount of change for this morning and waiting for the circuit to come to them, and that's what we're seeing now. Here's Andy Knight having a look inside John Penny. No. Andy Knight up into the 11th position. This is a storming drive from the, uh, the local track expert. You've got to say, former Toyota Racing Series champion, and looking for the position down the inside of Penny at the sweeper. Andy Anderson with the big launch off the curbs. The reason why they parked Andy Knight's car after race one, it had a little bit of front suspension damage in one of the tie rod ends, and they decided to call it quits for the day. Uh, just to basically bank their tyres for this race and more importantly reverse grid race. Well, he and probably Tim Angel are going to be near that sort of uh, point end for the reverse grid races. Jace, uh, John Penny pinches a break down into two. That's got uh, Andy Knight maybe an opportunity to get up the inside into pothole. No good exit speed for JP in the Penny Holmes Ford. So Jason Bargwana now looking like he's starting to struggle and just falling back into the clutches of his Tarlac Motorsport teammate, Eddie Bell, who was really disappointed after race one, admitted it was his own fault, just locked the rear brakes into the hairpin and it was game over, and uh, finished back in the 11th, uh, 12th position with a, a real good top six going. On board with Scott McLaughlin on the limiter in second gear to turn five. There's a tail lights. I think that's Andrew Anderson's car in front of him. The tail lights on forever. He's got to run down the inside. Now, if he can stay there, which he can't, he won't be picking that position up there. 11th and 12th. Andy Knight just up ahead in the 10th position now from grid position 20. Inside six laps of the second race for the BNT V8s here from Powerball Tools Raceway. Taking a ride with young Scott McLaughlin, the 17-year-old expat Kiwi out of the Gold Coast in Australia. Racing for the Racing Projects team under the tutelage of uh, Nigel Barclay. Spot. As Andy Knight's got the run here on JP for the ninth spot. Game over. John Penny, Andy Knight's going to come down the inside. He'll just maintain that. Now Scott McLaughlin, he might have a run down the inside of Andrew Anderson as well. John is pretty happy after his first race in the back in the Ford with a ninth place finish. He's uh, certainly a lot happier than when he was in uh, the Holden coming off Pukekohe. As we go back with McLaughlin applying the pressure to Andrew Anderson for the 11th position. I was speaking to Nigel Barclay about Scott McLaughlin and what, how he thought, given all Nigel's experience with supercars, this young man's development, and he shook his head and he said, the guy is good, he's got maturity beyond his years, and if he carries on his career path, he think he's destined for big things. Now, the other car we haven't seen much of, we talked about Wade Henshaw going back, and he's in the 19th position after a sixth-place finish and a sixth starting spot for race two is Martin Short. Short finished in seventh in race number one. That's where he started for race two, and he's back in 16th. So they were sort of in the same proximity. I wonder if Short and Henshaw haven't had maybe an issue together. Quite possibly, like you say, there's a lot of similarities to where they started, where they're battling, and where they are now. So somewhere off screen, they may have got made a contact together. Angus Fogg starting to charge. He's just seen his fastest lap of the race at 130.972. Second of the drivers into the 30s, Craig Beards just dropped in a 130.995 as we're back on board with Kane Scott in the third position. I spoke to him before the race and he alluded to the fact that he believed that there was an opportunity for the other drivers to make some gains. They were pretty happy with their race car, but if the other guys got quicker, they might have some issues, and that seems to be proving that point at the moment. It's Scott McLaughlin trying to get down the inside of Andrew Anderson, down into two. Yeah, here we go. Andrew's just gone a little bit wide. Scott, are you going to say, it's going to be a drag race between the two Holdens. Down a pothole, Tim Angel's yeah. buying into this as well. Yeah, so he's just going to stay right on the back of McLaughlin's car and pick one position up, just like that. Oh, Anderson oh. off. 
Runs wide at Pothole. He gets it back on to the track, but he's lost two spots to Scott McLaughlin and Tim Edgell. So still struggling with the ITM Holden. They've just really struggled with car balance over the first two rounds of the championship. Here is the peak antifreeze replay and on board with Scott McLaughlin and exit stage left. One Andy Anderson. Yeah, just got out on the loose marbles and once you're out there there's no control at all. So Andy done a very good job bringing it back on the track. So McLaughlin up to 12th, that'll bring in fact 11th. Edgel up to the 12th position also from the back of the grid after a DNF in race number one. John McIntyre just controlling things out in front. But Kane Scott now starting to come back to Angus Fogg with just a couple to go. Yeah, give us another lap or so, just because of the car speed. I think this is going to be a three-way battle for second place. Kane Scott, we know, is very strong. Angus may have set his car up for the early part of the race, which I am betting he did, because starting from grid number five, he had to make an impact straight away. We saw that happen. Kane Scott, he's coming on song, so is Craig Bearden. Well, two to go. John McIntyre's just done his fastest lap of the race at a 130.958. The top four drivers are covered by three one-hundredths of a second in outright lap pace. How competitive is that? And that's something that we've talked about over the last, uh, well, you know, one and a half rounds. Yeah, I'm just shaking my head about how much of the level of competition has risen from last year to this year. And that's why it's going to be so hard to try to predict a champion this early because the cards are turning every time we look at the race, isn't it? So John McIntyre starting the race third in the points, only two points away from Angus Fogg. So he'll look to leap ahead of the LG Motorsport forward, but it's, it's going to have the effect of closing up the championship even more. And looking at Beard, he is going to lose about 15, I believe. To Angus Fogg. So it's really going to tighten things up heading to race number three. On board with Martin Short. He's got the right hand uh, mirror hanging off the side of the zone. Classic hits Ford and scored in the 16th position. So he certainly lost some ground at the start of this race, having started out of position seven. He's chasing down Nick Ross to turn nine. Simon Richards just ahead of the total Commodore. In the 14th spot as we go to the last lap. John McIntyre controlling things out front. What a turnaround from race number one for the two-time former series champ, Angus Fogg. Looks pretty comfortable, able to hold off Kane Scott for the moment. And Craig Baird is just lying back there and wait, thinking of the championship. I think it's too early to think about the championship because they've still got to get through this, uh, this race, in particular the reverse grid race. And maybe it's the calculations coming in. If I finish fourth, I might start in front of these guys in the last uh, reverse grid race, as we'll say. But... You know, these guys are hungry, all they want to do is win races, and if there's an opportunity to pass the car in front, rest assured, I'm sure they will. John McIntyre looking for win number three. And his 54th career BNT NZ, NZV8 victory. Over a span of what, I think about 10 years. Just a staggering statistic, isn't it? Well, it started at 51 at the beginning of Pukekohe. He managed to win two there, as so we're back on board with Kane Scott chasing down Angus Fogg. Crossed the line at first, finished third with a 10 second penalty. He's third on track here at the moment. More importantly for him, he is gaining very important points. He started the weekend 10th, but he's Johnny Mack in the ad call forward. He's back on track out of the final turn. And he will take the victory here at Powerball Tools Raceway. Race two for the BNT V8s. Johnny Mack is back. The checkered flag flies. Angus Bob second. Kane Scott in third, Craig Bed in fourth to maintain the championship lead. The first of the Hollands will be Andy Booth in fifth, with Australian Jason Barguana crossing the line in sixth. That was pretty clinical, Mark. It was a very clean race, wasn't he? He got the lead at the start and just maintained it in there. He is. His car's in very hot side, probably 55 degrees at the moment, so any bit of cold you can get at this part of the race is a certainly very good reprieve. Well, the championships just got tighter with the third and final race to come, and look out, it's the reverse grid. John McIntyre with the victory in race number two. Fords one through four with Angus Fogg in second, Kane Scott in third, Craig Beard in fourth. First of the Holdens home was Andy Booth in the fifth position. Head of Jason Barguana, Eddie Bell, Paul Manuel, Andy Knight, and another top ten for John Penny. Well, what a race and what a start, Johnny Mack. No, 
I say the red face, and often when I speak to a bloke with such a red face. Oh, I might have had my belts on too tight, but look, uh, it was an exciting start. Craig Baird, he's always the, uh, the start specialist, so I thought if we got him, we've got really good car speed here, we could actually walk away with it, and we ended up doing that. I got the impression that once you had that start, it was all pretty much just drive it to the finish. Look, it's the same for everyone. If you get out in that clean air, your brakes are nice and cool, and you can just uh, do your own lines and look back in the mirror, hopefully, and watch everyone fighting, which they were doing quite nicely. Did you get a chance to have a look at that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I had to have a look up every now and then, but, you know, you can make so many mistakes here with all of these corners. With nine corners, you uh, really can make a big mistake quite easily. So I had to just watch what I was doing and uh, see when the chicken flag fell. I don't want to tempt Fabio talking about the reverse grid, about how you're feeling the rest of the day is going to go. Oh, look, we won't talk about that until afterwards, I think. But, you know, we'll always go in with the same approach. It's just it's 20 laps. We've got good car speed, and we'll uh, just let it come to us, hopefully. Keep that car straight, eh? Let's hope so. Thank you.